Candace Carter, Thoughts to Go, continuing to tell the story from my book, We Save the World, in English. This is part six, I Meet Sophia. We had no conception of calendars, but I must have been around the age of 10 when I saw Sophia for the first time. She came on a boat with new wardens. Even though she walked together with the others, all eyes were on her. From a distance, we could hear her infectious laugh. Those who came with her seemed relaxed and happy. Yes, I was young, but instinctively I knew that Sophia's arrival was something very important. One of my earliest memories of Sophia was a mild summer evening with her and the other children on the beach. She was sitting with an infant on her lap and humming softly to the baby as she rocked him. Fascinated, we listened to the humming that seemed to be in rhythm with the soft evening waves washing in. Marie, a small autist, put her face close to Sophia, asking what these noises meant. Sophia knew that Maria didn't want to be touched, so instead she blew, she blew lightly on the girl's eyelids, signaling her to sit down next to her. In time, I could observe the various signs Sophia developed to communicate with autists, deaf mutes, and others. But she had no answer for Maria's question and only said the sounds came from her heart. Noises, beautiful noises, another autistic boy called as he ran circles around us. I have noises too sometimes, but yours are so wonderful. Carefully, Sophia laid the baby down. There the infant rolled its eyes, jerked and made erratic sounds, but the warm sand seemed to comfort it. Sophia helped the baby to relax by copying the sounds the child made. She then asked Victor, the young runner, to round up all the children. Thrilled with his responsibility, Victor dashed off and with the help of Marie's older brother, Anton, we were soon all gathered around Sophia for a grand noise-making gathering. You cannot imagine what joy we shared this night. Soon all the adults came to join us too. We made bonfires along the beach and Sophia stood at the, on the biggest fire with the infant in her arms surrounded by his children. With a dazzling smile, she opened her mouth and sang a long, low tone. Later, I knew that Sophia had a full alto voice, but at that time, I only experienced the amazing vibrations and the written, richness the tone mastered. It was as if all our bodies were being gently massaged, massaged at the same time. Just as I thought Sophia must take a breath, Marie and Anton picked up the note and carried it deeper and higher. This new world of melody erased our inhibitions and we began to dance around the fires. We lost all our spasms and twitches as we moved to a rhythm we up to then did not know our bodies possessed. We danced and sang through the night. If one of us grew tired, he or she simply lay down in the warm sand to sleep. In the early dawn, we found ourselves surrounded by our farm animals. Even some of the wild animals from the jungle had come out to sit at the edge of the beach. The cats purred around our legs and the cows allowed us to drink their milk directly from their udders. Looking back, I know our great adventure began this night on the beach. That's it for now. Until the next time.